Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. How are you guys doing today? It's a beautiful Saturday in Indianapolis. It's almost like 70 degrees outside, I can hardly believe it. Anyway, um, I'm so excited. I have like just completed 11 books um, on my goal towards reading 100 books this year. Um, and I'm about to finish one audiobook, and I'm about to finish uh, a print book. So I, I'll be 13, and I'm just, I'm awesome, so get over it. I am. But anyway, no, I'm not. I have also, in, uh, also with my attempt to read 100 books in the year of 2017, um, I am also attempting to do a video review of every book that I read this year. Um, and it's for a lot of different reasons. It's you know, I want to be able to go back and see these books. Sometimes I forget, like, the books I read, and I'm like, honestly, like, what did you really think about it? Do you, do you ever do that? Like, you can even go into, like, your Goodreads or whatever and see, like, what you wrote about it, and it still doesn't mean a whole lot. So I want to be able to, like, and I'm trying to do them, like, the day after I finish it, because, well, with this one that I'm about to review, it's been, like, two or three days. But, um, because I want it to be, like, fresh in my mind. Um, and I can get, like, an immediate response. Immediate response to how I felt about that book. So um, today we're going to talk about If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Rousseau. Um, I started reading this for Diversathon at the end of 2000. Was it the first week of January? Yes. Um, and then it kind of went into Emojiathon with February because I hadn't finished it yet. Um, and so I'm reading it for emoji. I'm just reading it. it I, I just read it. I finished it. It doesn't really matter. I was supposed to do a buddy reads to read this with Philippe at the YA Reader, like last summer. He read it and was like, oh my God, it's so good. And I just, I was reading so many books at the same time, if you remember that, that I just couldn't get through it. Um, what's really interesting is that this time that I sat down, I think I went from like page 30 to the end in literally like three days. I mean, it was such a fast read. I honestly was like, why did I not read this more like, in the summer, like, why didn't I give it more of a chance? And I just think that certain you know, certain books at certain times are, are hitting you. And um, I'm kind of on a roll again right now with reading LGBT YA or just LGBT in general. Um, and I have really been trying to make a conscious effort of focusing a lot on trans literature um, and educating myself on that. And this is such a phenomenal book for that. Um, she, Meredith Rousseau, first of all, is a trans author, which I think is very, very important um, in reading this book because it's coming from her own voice. Um, she does, the, the, okay, first of all, if she weren't a trans author and it had nothing to do with anything but just the story and we weren't critiquing it for diversity, it's just a great story, okay? It's a great story about a girl changing towns, going to a new high school. I mean, that coming of age story has been told a lot. It actually is basically my book. But that I wrote, but it's, I mean, she somehow makes it seem fresh. Um, there are such beautifully woven characters in here. It was interesting because when Philippe and I were talking back and forth about it this summer, he would say, wait till you get a little further and like she'll introduce some new characters. And like, you know, it was interesting because if you've read this book, like I'm just going to mention some characters. Like B was one of my favorite characters up to a certain point. Um, and I didn't feel like she was unoriginal, even though I had known people like that, if that makes sense. Um, Amanda is such a cool example of who she represents in the book as a main leading trans character. Um, I also have to say this, and this is not ruining anything for the book. I think you assume this very, very quickly. I think this book is super important because it is... Um, um, it is about a trans teenage girl who's post-operative, okay? So she's not in the stages of early hormones and things like that or, you know, I mean, I think those stories are important, don't get me wrong, but I don't think this story has been told. And I think it's really important for that. Um, and what's really interesting about this is that she's post-operative, but she's also telling the story of what happened to get her where she's at. And that includes suicide attempts and poor, relation, poor relationships and support groups. And it's just so fantastic. It is absolutely so well done. And even, like I said, even if you're not reading it for that diversity factor, which I mean, to me, I think that's always like a secondary thing with the book. I think that's great. But like, I want to read a book because I want to get into the story. And I so got into the story. Like, I so fell in love with the characters. Oh my God, her best friends that she makes in this new town. Like, 
I really didn't think it was gonna end the way that it ended, okay? Like, I mean, not at all. Like, not at all. And in fact, I, even towards like the last 10 pages, I was like, this is how it's gonna end. And it, she's so fair to the characters. This is what is so honest about this book, okay? Not only is it, or this is what's so awesome about the book. Not only is it an honest portrayal of a trans young woman, it is also an honest portrayal of life, okay? And I think in 2017, even in the South where she lives, I think the times have changed, and a little bit. I mean, I think it's still very, very difficult out there, but I think that what she offers in this book is hope. And I think she says, give people a chance, okay? People may surprise you. Um, and you know, Maya Angelou was also an author who encourage people to have faith in human nature that people will show you sometimes that they've changed and i love that about this book i thought it was absolutely beautiful i was hoping meredith russo i followed you on twitter don't you know i'm youtube famous you're supposed to follow me back anyway i like read through all her tweets but uh, did you ever do that like you follow somebody and then you like read all their tweets and all of a sudden you realize you're like in 2014 and you're like i've lost my mind okay she probably would think i'm a stalker <laughs> but anyway um this book, although a contemporary romance, because that's really what it is, okay? I'm just going to be honest with you, and I love the romance part of it. I mean, Grant as a boyfriend, would we not all want a Grant? Um, but anyway, it is a contemporary romance, but it's so deserving of a sequel, okay? So deserving. She leaves it completely open-ended. It's so deserving of a sequel. So I really hope it comes up with a sequel. Um, you know, I'm doing percentage ranks this year. Um, I would give it, I'm going to tell you why, and this is not a whole huge criticism, so don't come for me. I would give it a 98%, and the last 2%, I wouldn't, why I would, the only thing that stuck out to me was, there's a colloquial southern voice that's used throughout the book at times, and it kind of floats in and out. Like, you don't know when it's going to be there. And I don't know if Meredith Rousseau did that on purpose. If she did, for it to all, if, for it not to be existent through the whole book, then she was genius because it worked, okay? If it was like, like sometimes she remembered and sometimes she didn't, that was the only thing that stood out to me. And I think that's the difficulty in using colloquial terms and vocalage, vocalage, <laughs> verbiage, verbiage, sorry, um, in, you know, writing is that you have to stick through it all the way through the book. But like, I hardly even noticed it. Like the book is just so awesome. 99%, 99%. Hey, I love this book. Five stars. Talk to you guys later. Bye.